So we are up to 2, 3, day 1. This is a pretty bizarre sort of thing in trigonometry, and it's called quadrantals. Now, in geometry class, remember you were taught that triangles have three sides, three angles. Trigonometry is going to kind of power play geometry and say, you know, you're going to have to use your imagination um, because of these things called quadrantals. A quadrantal is a triangle, an imaginary triangle, at 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270. Now I'm going to explain each little piece. As you can see at zero degrees, I've got my spinner right here. Now I'm trying to represent zero degrees by having a very small angle right here. But remember, zero degrees means zero degrees, nothing. But we have to represent what's going on, so I have to expand it a little bit. And if it's zero degrees, my opposite side right here would be zero. My adjacent side, remember, my adjacent side is always my x-axis. Keep that in mind as I continue to 90, 180, 270. So, I call the, the, the hypotenuse is always positive. Remember that. And at this moment, the adjacent side equals the hypotenuse. So with all of this in mind, sine of zero degrees is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So we have zero, because really at zero degrees, this little sliver is nothing, it disappears. So I get zero over the hypotenuse, which we're, going to, we're just going to call it one. It could be 10, it could be 20. We're just going to call it one to keep it simple. What's zero divided by anything? Zero. Now, if you ever question this, you can always use your calculator and just type in sine of zero, and you will uh, confirm your suspicions. Cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Notice they're both the same. Now this could be 2 and 2, 10 and 10, but using the unit circle idea where the radius is 1, that would match the hypotenuse once this hits 0. So this would be 1 over 1, which is just 1. Tangent. That's defined as opposite over adjacent. Well, remember, the opposite side disappears. The adjacent side we're calling 1. 0 over anything is 1. Now let's go ahead and move over to the red 90 degrees. So I'm going to erase this. We're going to talk about what happens at 90 degrees. Okay, the definition of sine, cosine, tangent doesn't change, but our picture changes big time at 90 degrees. Notice this is my spinner, and I got really close to 90, and also, remember, to create your triangle, you always come back to the X. And all of a sudden, everything changes. My opposite is 1, my hypotenuse is 1. My adjacent, which is always my x-axis, disappears at 90 degrees. So, opposite would be 1, hypotenuse would be 1, so sine of 90 is 1. Check it out in your calculator. Cosine, adjacent which is the side that disappears over my hypotenuse, 0 over 1, is 0. Tangent, opposite, which is 1, adjacent, which is 0, undefined at 90 degrees. Now, let's consider 180. So we're going to change all these things to 180, 180, 180. So, we go over to where our triangle, our spinner goes 180. We've got to stop just shy of it just to imagine what's going on. Again, my opposite side disappears just like over here. And my hypotenuse is always 1, and it matches my adjacent, but this time we have a twist. This is a negative direction, so we've got to consider it being negative 1. So at 180 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse would be 0 over 1, which is 0. Cosine, negative 1, because that's what this is, over 1 is negative 1. Again, test it out on your calculator. Tangent, opposite, which is 0, over adjacent, negative 1, 0. And now, 270. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of these. And let's see what happens at 270, 270, 270. Well, notice my spinner, it starts here and goes all the way around to 270, and I stop just shy of it. There's my spinner. 
Remember, don't go back to your y-axis ever. You go back to your x. Here's my adjacent side, which is zero. My opposite side is right here, but because it's down, it's a negative one. My hypotenuse stays consistent. One, 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 one. So my opposite side here is negative one. Hypotenuse is one, negative one. Cosine of 270. Adjacent side disappears. Hypotenuse is one, zero. Tangent of 270. My opposite side is negative one. My adjacent side disappears again. That is undefined. Um, zero degrees is the same thing as 360, so keep that in mind. And uh, again, don't forget to test these out when you come to it. Okay, getting away from quadrantals, now we're going to dive into uh, solving equations involving trig. So now, they're going to give you the ratio and they're going to ask you to find the angle, or how far you have to spin your spinner to create this story. Well, on a problem like this, sine is negative square root of 2 over 2. They're telling you the opposite side is negative square root of 2, and they're telling you the hypotenuse is 2, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, if we remember our rules, all students take calc, um, they're asking us, okay, find, um, you know, actually, I'm going to figure out what this is first, and then we'll do part A. So, if I take a look at this, and I say, okay, the square root of 2, the square root of 2 is a real trigger for a 45, 45, 90. So, I would take a look at this quadrant, and I'd say, wait, all, all things are positive, so I can't use that. Over here, sine is positive, so I can't use that. So, this could potentially happen with a, with a 45 degree reference angle right here, creating my triangle here. And I would say, okay, my opposite side is negative square root of 2. My hypotenuse is 2. So I ask myself, does this follow the rules of a 45, 45, 90, where that's x and that's x and this is x squared of 2? And the answer is yes. Now ignore the negative a minute. If I multiply that by the square root of 2, yeah, I'd get 2. A little different variation of this, but it still works which tells me that this is also the negative square root of 2 because it's a 45, 45, 90. So how far did I spin my spinner to get here? Well, I spun my spinner. Uh, 180 plus 45 is 225, which if we did that in radians, it'd be 45 degrees once, twice, three, four, five times. So that's 5 pi over 4. Now, there's another one where if we spun it all the way to here, we could also spin it to here. Now my drawing's a little bit bad, but that's negative square root of 2. This is 2, and that would make this the square root of 2, just for kicks and giggles. But So again, my re reference angle is 45, but I had to spin it this time 315 degrees, which is 2 45s. 445s, 645s, 745s. So, 7 pi over 4. So there's my two answers that are in, in that little range there. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, for all x, they're just going to say, all right, if you can get here by going 225, you could get there again by adding 360 as many times as you can and we got to get used to this phrase. That's 360 times any whole number. So it could be another one time around or twice around to that spot. So my other answer for all x would be this plus 2 pi over n. It just means add 360 as many times as you want and you'll just get the same picture. But then I would also do the same thing here for part A, for this red answer, I would add 2 pi n, which just means go here, and then you could go one time around more, or two times around more, that's what that n stands for. All right, with that in mind, let's go to number two. This one, we're going to have to divide by 2, divide by 2 to get started, so we have cosine of some angle is equal to negative 1 half. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, all students take calc. 
Cosine is positive here, so we're not going to investigate there. Everything's positive there, so we're not going to investigate there. Now, when we look at this and we say, hey, the adjacent's negative 1 and the hypotenuse is 2, we have a relationship of a 30, 60, 90, where there's always one side that's half the hypotenuse. And that's when my reference angle is a 30 degree angle, and that's 60, and that's the square root of 3. Now, we don't see the square root of 3 in here, but let's just stick with this. The adjacent side needs to be negative 1. My spinner needs to be 2. That makes this 30, this 90, which the most important piece is right here, 60. Because I have to spin my spinner 120 degrees, which is 60 degrees twice. So it's 2 pi over 3s. Okay, but there's another place we can spin our spinner to create this situation, and it's right here. So there's my spinner 2. This is negative square root of 3, but we don't need it. But that's 60 degrees to create this other picture where cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this time I spun my spinner 180 plus 60, which is 240 degrees, which is 60 degrees four times. Um, so I could get, uh, let's see, 60, 60 degrees times four, so that's pi over three four times. Now these answers answer this both of these answers. So, if I want to find for all x, that means I need to add that little fancy 2 pi n, and for this one, add 2 pi over n, or 2, 2 pi times n, because that means you can go here, and then go around again, and then go around again, as many times as you want for an infinite number of cycles. Same thing with this one. Okay. Pause that a second. Got one couple more to show you. Okay, we're going to squeeze in number three, and then we'll have to have a part two to this video. But so now they're taking it easy on us, just saying, hey, find out where in one spin, zero to three sixty, where is this true? So I'm going to add the square root of three to both sides. Do some math here. So two cosine x equals the square root of three divided by 2, divided by 2. So I get cosine of some spin equals the square root of 3 over 2. Hopefully you know that's a trigger for 30, 60, 90. Remember, the square root of 3 is always opposite the 60 degree angle. So first of all, where is cosine positive? Well, it's positive here and here. So it's not positive here and not positive here. So square root of 3 because it's cosine, is my adjacent side. Remember, that's always my x-axis. So there's my square root of 3. My hypotenuse is 2. So that's going to look like something like this. So there's my 2. There's my 1. This is my 30, because my 1 is always opposite my 30 in a 30, 60, 90. I can duplicate the same thing right here, but this is negative 1, and this is 2. So notice, in this upper triangle, adjacent over hypotenuse, ding, ding, ding. In this triangle, down here, adjacent over hypotenuse, ding, ding, ding. So I spun my spinner 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, which fits in there. And I spun my spinner 330 degrees, which is 30 degrees 11 times. So it's 11 pi over 6. All right, so that finishes part one of this video. Part two, you're going to have to check it out. We're not quite done.